Bippity boppity boo, this is an episode that will now be going into session. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever, everybody. In this week's episode, I will be telling you about how to start and run your own podcast. For a bit of context, in case you're just seeing my podcast now due to this episode, I've been podcasting for over two years now and I've learned quite a bit over time. Early on, when I was first creating my podcast, I had no one giving me any sort of advice or suggesting what site to use to distribute the podcast. Though, whenever I'd looked up sites to use, it was all just advertisements from each site saying that they're the best. So here I am, to give you all a little bit of advice in order to help you all with your goals of running a podcast. And hint it, not all the sites are as good as they say they are. In fact, a lot of them are absolute trash. So without further ado, let's get into it. Did I seriously have a voice crack? God damn, I'm 17. <laughs> anyway, starting off, I first created my podcast on a site called Sounder, a site where you can create and distribute podcast episodes for completely free. Though when I first created my podcast, I needed software to record, so I quickly moved on. But before I moved on, I signed up for my podcast to distribute to all the sites that were there. Now, some of you may have a question along the lines of, but once you switch to a different site, wouldn't your podcast stop distributing to the ones offered on Sounder? Well, you see, when you create a podcast, you get this thing called an RSS feed. And what an RSS feed feed is, is a web feed. It is responsible for distributing your podcast episodes whenever you release a new one. It has multiple details, such as your podcast name, your name, as well as, an episode, as well as episode titles and descriptions. For the Patreon listeners, you will see a clip in just a moment where I show off my RSS feed. But anyway, this RSS feed is now linked to all the sites that I've signed up for, signed up my podcast for. Even if I choose to leave, uh, to leave a different distribu- distribution platform. I woke up from that recently. I am tired. After I realized that Sounder wasn't what I needed, I soon found Spreaker. It has recording software, multiple audio in slash outputs, free sound effects, distribution, and even monetization as an option. Though you need to pay per, uh, purchase a paid version in order to be able to monetize. In fact, while I was writing the script for the episode, I noticed that they've actually raised their prices, took away some plans, and even made the limit for the free version more limited. So for the free version of Spreaker, you get a maximum of 5 hours recording time and a maximum of 15 minutes per episode. But now they've also added a 10 episode limit. For the Patreon listeners, I'll show you in just a moment what I mean. So here's what I recommend doing so far to review. Create your podcast on Sounder. Sign up to distribute your your episodes to episodes offered on the site. Then copy your RSS feed and transfer to Spreaker. There I'd recommend choosing the free option. Sign up to distribute to all sites offered there. Then Then here's the next thing. I'd recommend releasing your first episode on Spreaker. Next up, Anchor. That's the site I currently use for distribution. After your podcast has been approved for all the offered sites on Spreaker, I recommend copying your RSS feed and switching to Anchor. It's completely free and has an option to to record on the site as well. Though the audio tends to cut or distort from time to time, so that's where I recommend using a separate recording software. Granted, I'm pretty sure the best softwares can only be downloaded on computers like Windows and Mac. So if you use a Chromebook, then I'd recommend using the recording option on Anchor and just listening through to ensure it's not too messed up. Alright, so the software that I use to record audio is Audacity. It's pretty amazing. You have the option to cut out background noise, suppress or increase volume post-recording, have multiple inputs, and so on. It's easy to learn and edit with as well. It's also completely free. Audacity is typically used by audiobook recorders, but legit anyone can use it. So what I do is record my audio on Audacity, then edit through it to add it 
in the bell sound effect, as well as cut out any pops that got in from my headphones. After that, I designed my thumbnail and upload both the audio and thumbnail to Clipchamp, which is a free video editing software. It has a recording option on it, though I've never used it since laptop cameras are low quality in general. So I recommend the th thumbnail audio. So I recommend the thumbnail and audio to get. So I edit the thumbnail and audio together, then export it. That's when I upload it to other sites. I upload the audio itself to Anchor, and I upload the video option to YouTube. For anyone wondering, I use a gaming headset to record my audio. You can use, you can see it in a few of my past collaborative episodes. I've been wanting to get a proper microphone and like an arm for it so I can attach it to my table, but I could never find anything that was decent quality was decent quality for a decent price. And being a podcast, I kind of need the audio to be good. All right, so. You've created your podcast, but you don't know either what it should be about, how to design it, or what your first episode should be. Well, in terms of the topic, I can't tell you since you're on your own. Per you're, you, you are your own person. I am slow brain right now. However, I'd recommend going into a niche that can be easy to come up with ideas for. Also, I'd recommend thinking about series that you can have on the podcast. For instance, the series on mine are reading chapters of my books, book reviews, which I'm pretty sure I'm behind on, sit and laugh with me, spontaneous stories, and so on. Trust me, the series are what you can use to fall back on if you can't think of content. Don't forget, social media is your friend. So if you don't have your niche decided, then look through what other people are posting or talking about, and think about how you can cater to... how how you can cater to how you think to make the content unique. As for your first episode, I'd recommend an about me. For instance, mine, I went briefly into who I am, what experience I have in my niche, and what I'll be posting on my podcast. Granted, that episode was posted over two years ago and is less than three minutes long. So a lot has changed over time, but nonetheless, it's, start it's a starting point, especially for the first episode. Also, if you'd like to start a podcast but are unsure as to if you'll be able to make content for it due to a lack of ideas, before making your first episode, plan out 10 episodes for your podcast. If you can with just a bit of research, then go for it. If you can't, then maybe try having your podcast reach into more than one niche that you have an interest and experience in. Next... Now is something that I will always recommend, no matter what your podcast is on. Script your episodes. Throughout the years, I've always heard people be like, "Oh, I don't need to want to script my episodes because it wouldn't make because it would make everything unnatural," or "Oh, I don't need to script. I have all the ideas and what I want to say in my head." No, you don't. Script your episodes. You don't have to read word for word, but it'll be much better as a guideline. They were t there were times that I would be recording with someone and ask them to work on an episode script with me so I know what they're going to say, and be able to quickly respond with no dead air to edit out, and they would. However, when we'd actually get to recording, they, would have the they wouldn't have the document open and would end up saying things completely different than what they wrote. So I'd end up stumbling for a response and would have to go for a bland response like, Thank you. Very interesting. Next question. Then later on they'd ask if we could go back to an earlier question because they forgot to bring up something. Something that they had written in the script. So please, script your episodes. It'll be something for you to fall back on when you don't know what to say. It'll save you from stuttering constantly and you won't end up forgetting other things you wanted to say. For instance, a lot of my episodes are written in advance, so if I end up remembering something later on that I didn't remember when writing the script, then I could quickly go back and write it in. Next, there are some things I'd recommend avoiding. First up, Riverside.fm. Absolute trash. I don't recommend it no matter what. It's partnered with Anchor, but it is so behind in terms of everything. For instance, 
I recorded one of my Death Chill episodes on it. I believe it was Chapter 6. And it would constantly cut out, lose connection, fuck up the audio, and the video option is absolute trash. The editing on it is difficult and slow as well. So all in all, ignore those Riverside ads that you've seen, because it is horrible. Next, avoid collaborating with people who don't have much to say. It can get difficult to get things out of, out of them, like trying to get them to go more in depth. For recording visual episodes when I'm doing a collaboration, I use Zoom, since Google Meet is shit. When it comes to recording and Zoom gives when it comes to recording, and Zoom gives more audio and visuals separately. That way you can edit. Though, for visual episodes that I'm recording by myself, I use Twitch Studio. It's not too laggy and has many options in terms of additions that can be added on screen. Though something that angers me is that my gaming laptop doesn't let me view the video beforehand without a separate application that I don't have. So I end up having to upload it straight to YouTube and set it in private in order to make sure nothing's wrong with it. Now for the sites. I recommend you go... I recommend you check out... Now for sites I recommend you check out. One is called Audrey. It is, a site where you, it is a site where you can meet people to collaborate with inside your niche, trade shoutouts, and even pay for other podcasts to advertise yours. I was asked to join by the site owner early on, and I believe I've done one collaboration through it. But I haven't checked it in over a year, so I probably have more message requests that are just marinating. Although, after I've written the script, the next day I decided to check my email because I was bored, and I notice one from Audrey. Uh, so I'll just read it out for you all real quick. Hi, Portia. Today we have to share some unfortunate news, news with you. We are very sorry to inform you that due to various factors, Audrey will be closing down the business. As a result, that also means that the Audrey platform will discontinue in a few weeks. We appreciate all the feedback and lovely messages we have received since the launch in March 2020. The final day will be the 15th of November 2022, so you have all the time you need to wrap up your conversations or move them to a different channel. After the 15th of November, all of your personal data on Audrey will be permanently deleted. Thank you for being part of the Audrey story, and all the best for your podcasting journey, your Audrey team. So, you could try to speedrun some connections for collaborations before the site shuts down, or you can search for another collaboration site. But even if you end up not finding anything, or don't trust any of the sites you do find, don't worry. A majority of my collaborations so far were people reaching out to me via Instagram and email. Or email. So there's no need to panic. You'll get offers for collaborations once you grow some more. Besides, you could always reach out to others on social media and ask to collaborate with them. Next is Wisdom. It's an app that I know for a fact that is available on iPhone, though I'm not sure if it's been added to Android yet. But I believe they did. I was invited by the site owner back when it was in closed beta, so I have the top mentor verification, which was only given to a select few. It basically means that I make a bit more than the other mentors. Anyway, why I recommend uh, joining Wisdom is because you can make money per minute listen live. You also gain money when joining other people's lives and can make money off of answering uh, people's questions. You'll gain a currency called Mentor Coins, which you can cash out for gift cards like Amazon, Starbucks, and Target. Or you can also spend it on a charity like the Special Olympics. I'm choosing to go for the Amazon gift card since it's basically just cash of all the options there. Besides, I don't drink Starbucks and Target is dead in Canada. By the way, all of the site softwares, sites and softwares, not Riverside, will be linked in the description of this episode. Also, even when you're just started, even when you've just started your podcast, I'd recommend also creating a Patreon for it. It doesn't cost you anything to run, and yes, early on you won't be getting any patrons. However, it's another area to upload your content, and you can make special episodes for when people do end up deciding to join it. Also, I'd recommend uploading your episodes or clips of your episodes to Instagram. It's quick and easy to gain a following if you're uploading interesting content, so go with it. 
After all, it's just a larger reach. Don't forget, social media is your friend. Run a Twitter account too, if you feel like it. Though I personally find it difficult to care enough to open the app, which I find quite funny. Growing up, I used to be obsessed with social media and would post multiple times a day about random shit. But now I have no interest in posting. Seriously, back then I'd even have to force myself to not post for a week because I'd be spamming people's feed, and everyone would be mad at me in person. But now I see it as exhausting to try and post. Next up, designing your podcast image. Starting off, I ended up designing a simple profile image, which was a library of a library, my podcast name, and my name written down in black and red. That, that design, design ended up being the norm for over two years, and I've just recently remodeled it to something more appealing to look at and eye-catching instead of an eyesore. So I'd recommend putting some thought into the designs of your podcast appearance. Yes, you can always change it later on, but I also don't recommend switching things up frequently. For instance, the Misfits podcast has had the same design ever since they started back in 2018. There was no need to change it since it was unique to them and is eye-catching. Then there's also the YouTube thumbnails, which I'd recommend are a bit different from your profile image, but still in the same sense. I'm probably going to have to redesign the thumbnail for my monthly progress pod, progress update episodes since it looks so similar to the regular episode. But in general, when people see the thumbnail, they know it's my content, even if the title of the podcast was taken out. Now, I'm not a master of design, in fact I'm trash at it, but nonetheless, it should be common sense that design you put out is important. Then there's also the case of monthly stats updates. I like to d I like to do them because it shows others that growth is an instant, and it's a good way for me to document my progress. It can be plain old interesting to watch, and it gives me a chance to talk to my to thank my listeners. So by no means do you have to upload stats updates, but I'd still highly recommend it. Just an option though. Next up. Is the case of it is the case of it is next up is the case of it is a soul or I'll just reward that. Next up is if your podcast is solo or with two or more people. In general, I'm not a very social person, and I find collaborations a hassle. But nonetheless I still do them since it can be a good way to give someone else a voice, while also educating and entertaining others. If you're planning on running a podcast by yourself, congrats! You have no one else to worry about, and just need to make sure you make the content good. However, if you're working with other people as a group podcast, then you have then you have to worry about things such as their mental stability, how talkative they are, how busy their lives are, if they're reliable, and changes that can go on in their life that may hinder the productivity of the podcast. So if you do end up deciding to start a group podcast, you better be a patient person. Because not only do you have to have yourself to worry about, but you also have to worry about someone else too. Not to mention if you're working with someone who tends to lose interest in things pretty quickly, like starting things and never finishing them. There's like starting things and never finishing them. There's just so much to keep in mind when working with others. Now monetization. On Anchor, you have the option to set up pretty premium episodes once you reach 50 active listeners. You can also get paid through sponsorships when you grow more, and at some point, Anchor will pay you to do ad reads, shouting out Anchor. There are many ways to make money through monetization, but keep in mind, it'll take a while to get to that point. So if you're looking for quick money, a podcast is not for you. And... It's best if you actually enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, it's just another 9 to 5, but you're your own boss. Next, funding. It is free to start a podcast, especially if you already have the equipment that you need. There's no need for a bunch of expensive shit. No matter what all the artic those articles online tell you, you do not need to spend money in order to start and run a podcast. I repeat... 
wait until you start to make money off of your podcasting before you start spending money on it. Then there's a podcast website. I personally don't have one. However, it can be pretty helpful since it can give listeners a view into who you are aside from the podcast entirely. But it can also take a lot to maintain, not to mention making sure it's visual appealing all throughout the site. There's also the case of merch. When you start a Patreon, you have the option of launching your own merch for your patrons. If you'd like to, if you'd like to have merchandise, go for it, as long as it doesn't cost you any money to make. So print on demand, basically. There are tons of sites you can use that are completely free, so just ignore the sites that require you to pay a fee to design through them. Then there's also the case of upload schedule and frequency. Predetermine this before you're uploading your first episode. Don't just post something whenever you ha- finally have something to post. Decide on a date and time to schedule your episodes for. For instance, I upload once a week, every Sunday at 12 p.m. So with me having my ske- schedule schedule set as that, so with me having my schedule set as that, my listeners always know when a new episode is coming out, and it'll be regular in terms of the algorithm. So, also keep in mind frequency. Either once a week or once every two weeks, doesn't matter. Just keep up with a regular schedule. That is all. So in summary, start on Sounder and sign up for the distribution options. Move to Spreaker and sign up for the distribution options. Then record and upload your first episode. Move to Anchor as your primary site. Use Audacity to record and edit audio. Don't spend money on expensive podcast equipment. Make sure to design things to be pleasing. Follow my Patreon in order to get more in-depth and visual visual episodes. Use Wisdom to make money while recording. Use Audrey to find collaborators, though people also reach out to you directly if you grow enough. Keep up with social media and interact with people. The growth will be slow. Upload to Patreon even if you know no one will join it right away. Keep in mind productivity and mental health for both yourself and others. Schedule your episodes and keep in mind frequency. Follow at CWC Publishing on Twitter. Check out my novels Death Troll, Flame Rip, and Arctic Blaze on Amazon and Kobo. Link in description. Check out Creative Writing Club Patreon. Link in description. Check out Creative Writing Club Discord server in the description. Check out the Creative Writing Club Instagram at creative writing underscore club. Check out my personal Instagram at dark underscore nights underscore wolves. And boopity bop bippity boppity, this session will now conclude it.